In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, and who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood, or of the will of the flesh, or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. The painting which accompanies this reflection is one from a series by Daniel Bunnell, which depicts the road to Emmaus. It was drawn to my attention this week when I spent an hour with our ecumenical church partners. Usually at this time of year, Bishop Peter and I join our Roman Catholic brother, Bishop Declan, and leaders from Methodist, Baptist, Salvation Army and the URC at Downside Abbey for a 24-hour retreat. That wasn't possible this year. So we spent an hour online together, reflecting on this painting. My eye was particularly drawn to the light. The figures are small, yet the sky is expansive. It reminded me of the dawn that morning when the sky outside my window had bloomed red. Most mornings these days I am at my desk in my home office with piles of paper around me at my laptop. It can be oppressive. However, outside my window, I can view quite an expanse of sky. Behind our little patch of south-facing garden are some rooftops, and then, beyond, a glimpse of the golf course with a stand of trees atop the brow of King's Castle Hill. And then the sky extends. Some mornings I can't see the hill and sky for the fog. Other days I catch the sun trying to break through the heavy cloud as it rises above the hill. And then, occasionally, there are days when the sun burns bright with that cold January zeal, and I find myself having to shift position frequently as I sit on Zoom meetings so as not to be blinded by it. I can see, too, my own image on the screen which shows my face shining with light in some unnatural way, reminding me of how the Israelites of old were startled by the visage of Moses' face shining after he had come from the presence of God. I'm not sure all my Zoom meetings feel as if I have been in the presence of God, yet I have glimpsed him even at the hardest moments. Our Gospel reading this Sunday is from the opening of John's Gospel. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things come into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. It is a passage often read at our Christmas services and now revisited today as we turn from the season of Christmas and Epiphany, where we are reminded of how we see God as being revealed here as present in our world, to the purpose of his coming, the journey to the cross. Candlemas, the feast of the presentation of Jesus in the temple by his human parents, to be consecrated as the firstborn son by his heavenly father, marks the end of the season of Epiphany. It's, it's as if we now turn from the crib to the cross. God's purposes are being revealed. God has always been there at the very beginning in the process of creation. And at the moment in time, as John heralds the coming of Christ, 
And now, as we walk in our own path to the crosses we are called to bear. The light breaking into the darkness in those early days of creation is recalled here in John's Gospel as he seeks to point to Christ's coming into the world. He wants his hearers to understand the significance and to find comfort at a time of hardship and fear in the fact that God has not forgotten them but breaks into the darkness with light. So why am I showing you a painting of the road to Emmaus, part of the story of that first Easter day, before we've even begun Lent? I suppose it's because I was reminded of the story of those two disciples walking the weary way home to Emmaus after the climactic events in Jerusalem, which had seen their friend Jesus betrayed and lynched on a tree. They were distressed, questioning, running home to the place they called home. The evening was drawing in and the light was fading, and as they hurried, so a stranger draws close and asks a question. What is troubling them? The story tumbles out and in the course of the journey they tell him of their anxiety and doubt and he tells them how they might make sense of God's purpose across the ages. By the time they reach home it's dark and they invite him in and it is only at the moment that they sit to share a meal and they break bread together that the light dawns. This is the Christ, the one who participated in that first light coming into existence, the one whom the prophet John spoke of, the one who they had seen die and yet was now present with them in life. And it is then, as he disappears from their sight, that they are lit up. Did not our hearts burn within us as he talked with us on the way, is how they express it. I wonder how you are experiencing the darkness of these days just now. Has it seemed overwhelming? As if the darkness has crowded in? I wonder too if you have occasionally noticed the small figure of Christ now and again out of the corner of your eye at the edge of the painting of your life. Accompanying the Gospel reading this week is also a passage from the letter to the Colossians the part where Paul reminds that small and somewhat insignificant church to stay true to the preeminence of Christ as all important in their own salvation story. They had become distracted by a variety of different teachers putting forward their own religious theories and beliefs and Paul is seeking to centre them back onto the person of Christ. Christ who was present at the beginning of the world as light was brought into being, and now present also in bringing them, the Colossian Christians, to see the light of salvation. The light dawning in their thinking has turned their lives around. It should mean they will live differently, even at times of gloom. As a diocese, we are using some words from later in this letter for us to reflect on throughout this year, from chapter 3 and verses 12 to 17 where we are reminded that we are God's chosen ones, holy and beloved. And in the light of that knowledge, we then should reflect the light of Christ in the way we behave with one another. Our relationships should be characterised by compassion, kindness, humility, meekness and patience, bearing with one another, forgiving one another, loving one another. As we reflect on this painting, I'm reminded of its title, The Church of Joy. The gospel reading we have heard today ended with these words. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us. And we have seen his glory. The glory is of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. This painting gives me a glimpse of that glory. Brothers and sisters, we have the power to become children of God as those who believe in Jesus. However weak we may feel or feeble our faith, we have glimpsed the glory of the light dawning upon us and we are now called to live as people of joy as those, like the Christians at Colossae, 
who mirror the light of Christ in love, kindness and compassion. As those like John who point others to see the light for themselves. And also as those two disciples on the road to Emmaus whose hearts were burning, who were lit up and needed to immediately turn around and run back to Jerusalem to share their joy, even as the darkness surrounded them.